Okay, um, we're taking a look at Equal Rights for Women. The speaker is Shirley Chisholm um, from May 21st, 1969. So let's take a look at Andreas and see whether or not she is achieving all four steps of the introduction. In 1969, women and racial minorities had unfair rights and several disadvantages. Men had low expectations of women. They didn't think women could accomplish anything that was essential. The rights women had were suppressed and ignored. Women had no rights to hold public office, fair wages, have education, or even work. They could not serve in the military or be constricted either. So from here to here, Andre is doing an excellent job of sketching the problem. And as we start, talked about, step one is to sketch the general problem in history. And this problem is sexual discrimination, gender discrimination. Um, in the late 1960s. I think it's good, especially because she draws into specific disadvantages. Um, and I think that you might be, incor you're incorrect about some of your disadvantages, Andrea, so you might want to check your facts with research. Like, women could hold public office, obviously Shirley Chisholm held public office, but um, could not serve in the military. They could, but not in the same capacity as men. Right, women serving in the military, they served in the military in some capacity for a long time, but they wouldn't be fighting with the men, they wouldn't have the same rights. So I love that you go into specific details, check your facts a little bit. But her writing is solid. She's going from a general problem and then she's drawing it a little bit more specifically. Andrea is kind of merging step one and step two together a little bit because she doesn't have a specific event that she's focused on. Her step two is a lot less clear. Who has a very clear step two, a very clear event that's being discussed? What is it? Pearl Harbor, it's a very clear event. So your general is World War II, your specific is Pearl Harbor. Who else? Clear event. Oh, come on, folks. Oh, yes, very good. The election is a very clear event. Which speech? The last speech that everyone was using. Oh, final address, yeah. the end of the Civil War. Yeah, that's a specific event that he's ta that we're talking about. The um, Civil War overall and the end of the Civil War, um, the South surrender. Kira, <laughs> specific event. Uh, the Ronald Reagan speech. <coughs> True, that's your speech, but what's the specific event? What's your part two? Yeah, the, the explosion of the space shuttle. Very good. Andrea's is not quite so clear, but so she's doing a wonderful job with step one and step two. But Shirley Chisholm, the first African American woman to be elected to Congress, woman singular A N, the common student spelling mistake, to be elected to Congress, used her voice to bring attention to the situation. Her passion and independence surprised the members of her own political party. She violated the congressional norm. First year members were not allowed to be seen or heard in her first speech as an elected representative. She criticized President Richard Nixon on his idea to prioritize weapon systems over the needs of disadvantaged children. Chisholm's political courage made her a spokesperson for several women and African Americans. As an African American woman, is that? She went through racism and sexism throughout her career. That is, this is why she was an excellent voice for civil rights and women's rights. In her speech, Equal Rights for Women, she focuses, focuses on securing women's rights and equality. Her speech describes how men and women of any racial figure are to be treated with equality. Chisholm's various actions built a case for an equal rights amendment. All right, talk to me about what she's doing well and what she should probably do to revise, considering everything we talked about yesterday with this. She's making one of those two mistakes that I told you not to make. Which one? Yeah, Brendan. No, no, actually Shirley Chisholm doesn't appear until later, so she hasn't made that mistake. She does not introduce Shirley Chisholm until later in the speech, or later in the paragraph. Toby. She's summarizing the speech. Andrea, you're summarizing the speech a bit too much. So a lot of your sentences are about what she's saying in the speech. Remember, this is an introduction to the speech, not a summary of the speech. So... What does she need to keep, and what could she probably eliminate? Let's take a look. 
Shirley Chisholm, the first African American woman to be elected to Congress, used her voice to bring attention to the situation. Does that sentence need to stay? Well, you guys are on fire today. Chad? Yes, because it introduces Chisholm, so we need it. Her passion and independence surprised the members of her own political party. The commentary about the speech is not bad. It's fine. You can keep it. She violated the congressional norm. First year members were not allowed to be seen or heard in her first speech as elected representative. Does that speech talk about her giving the speech, or does it summarize what the speech is about? It talks about her giving the speech, therefore it stays. There's your dividing line, Andrea and everybody else. If you have sentences in there that talk about your speaker delivering the speech, they're good. That's introduction. If they talk about what they're saying, that's not good because that's summary. So if Kira talks about Reagan being on television, that's good because that's introduction. If um, Brendan talks about Roosevelt standing in front of Congress, that's excellent because that's introduction material. But if Brendan starts talking about descriptions of islands and the Pacific campaign and Japanese aggression, that doesn't work because that's summary. And here we go. She criticized President Richard Nixon on his idea to prioritize weapon systems over the needs of disadvantaged children. That's summary. It needs to go. Chisholm's political courage made her a spokesperson for several women and African Americans. As an African American woman, she went through racism and sexism throughout her career. That sounds like summary of the speech also. That could probably go. This is why she was an excellent voice for civil rights and women's rights. Um, that could probably go because that's more of your commentary on her a little bit. And then we have, in her speech, equal rights for women, she focuses on securing women's rights and equality. Will that sentence stay or go? Mario? Why? And what it, what is step four of this introduction? The speech and, and do what, Lawrence? The purpose of the speech. So this does it. She focuses on securing women's rights and equalities. Um, Ch Chisholm's valorous actions eventually built a case for the Equal Rights Amendment. Alice, I'll be with you in a moment. Okay. Hold on. So, yes, she ends by saying this is to secure women's rights. This is to build a case for an Equal Rights Amendment, which is an excellent point about purpose. So that works just fine. I like those sentences. We needed to cut it down a little bit to get to the point of who Chisholm is, what she was doing, and why she was doing it, rather than summarizing her criticism of Nixon or anything else. OK, so sorry about that pause, but back onto it. Um, Andrea needs to go back to her research to verify some of her facts about sexism in the 1960s. And she could probably find some kind of resource that talks about some of the evidence of sexism in the 1960s. That will help her bolster her steps one and two about the historical moment. Um, I think that she does a good job of identifying who Ch Shirley Chisholm is and the occasion of the speech and then the purpose of the speech. So if she just works on the history a little bit, I think this is an excellent introduction to the speech. And by saying that, I mean by the time I finish reading it, I understand exactly what we're talking about. Oh, it's a speech about women's rights given by an African-American member of Congress in the late 1960s in a period of intense sexual discrimination. Got it. I'm ready. Let's go. Of course, the next step will be a biography, but um, that introduction then works. Andrea, do you, do you have any questions? No? Anybody else have any questions? We're all good? Steps one, two, three, four. Okay.